Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Mark Steiner. Great to have you all with us once again. But the Israeli elections are done. <laughs> we think so anyway. 91% or so of the votes were in, last, last I saw. It's clear that no one has enough votes to form the government, but from the votes in, we can clearly see what's going on. The center-left Blue and White Party has 32 seats in the new Knesset, which is the parliament. Netanyahu's group has 31 seats, so no one can really form a government. Uh, then you have people like Avigdor Lieberman, whose Israel Netanyahu party uh, it could become the kingmaker, even though they're also deeply in a minority, but he wants to play kingmaker. We'll talk a bit about that. But there's a wild card, and the Arab-led joint list is the third largest party now in the Israeli parliament. That could have a number of uh, things could happen with that. We don't know. We have to see. We're going to figure out what that means. And we have with us, once again, Leo Tarachansky, documentary filmmaker. Uh, on the side of the road is her amazing documentary film that we played here as well. She's a former correspondent for The Real News and continues her work uh, in Canada, around the world as well. It's good to have you back, as always, Leah. And Thanks, Mark. In studio, joining us here uh, from Israel in a conversation that you'll be here alone with her uh, next week is Rachel Batari, who is a feminist political activist, co-founder of PC, which is an independent feminist media organization, and a leader of Zohrot, which is what we'll be talking about next week, an Israeli organization that educates Israelis about the Nakba. So, good to have you both here. Thanks, Mark. So, I mean, so here we, this is a, this, we see what happens with this election. Uh, it, it seems like no one can really form a government at this moment. But I want to talk about these two, what, what this really means. You have these, what well, I'm designating as these two wild cards, and perhaps you all will not agree, but I'm very curious what you think. You have Avigdor Lieberman and his very right wing nationalist anti religious party uh, that uh, has, I think, nine seats, if I'm correct. Um, and he could play kingmaker. He wants, he says, he says he wants a, coalition government with him and blue and white and Netanyahu's party. Um, then he says he doesn't want any part of it at all, and he's playing this game. But then you have the joint Arab list, whose leader, uh, Odeh, has said that he'd be willing to join a left government, but they could also become the opposition. And if they become the opposition, the first time in Israeli history an Arab party will be in opposition, it means they get security hearings from the prime minister, that they has the security detail, that he gets to speak right after the prime minister in the, parla in the, in the Knesset. So this is, to me, a f one of the most fascinating elections I've seen in a long time. I'm not sure what it really means. What does it mean, Leah? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have light air questions for me? Yeah, so it's just, I mean, it, it's a, I don't know if you will both share that idea. This is a very strange election. I mean, Israel is, it shows a fragmentation, I think inside of Israel, and also the, the, the inability to, to really form a government? Um, I'm not so sure that there is a fragmentation. Um, you know, I, I, when I was working for The Real News about 10 years ago, uh, one of the things that I, I was hired to do is to cover Barack Obama's first election. And uh, I was at the time, you know, a young research assistant for Paul Jay. And my job was to go through the platform of the Democratic and the Republican Party and to find the differences. And I remember, you know, staying up all night for days on end, reading through the two platforms. Lucky you. And being <laughs> horrified. Yeah, I know. It's so much fun. And being horrified that uh, despite the very big symbolic difference between Barack Obama and John McCain, there was very little difference in their actual platform. And I think that if you actually look at the, the nitty gritty of the Cholavan and Blue White and uh, the Likud Party, uh, in the uh, in the actuality of it, there's very little difference. The biggest difference, as far as I can tell, is that Likud has a lot of ideologues, people like Yudi Edelstein and uh, uh, Gilad Erdan and uh, Gidon Sar, um, and people who truly are uh, believers of uh, not just their uh, privilege uh, to be in power, but also of particular right-wing principles, whereas um, the Cholavan, we have no idea what they believe yet because it's clear that they uh, will adopt whatever position will get them elected. They're army generals. They're not particularly... That's the blue and white, this is the Blue and White Coalition Party, correct? Yeah, yeah yes, so right. we don't exactly know what they stand for. So as far as I'm concerned, Blue and White is not different from uh, the Likud. So I don't know if this is an act, what if, I don't know what this means is a split in the Israeli public. I don't think so. I think the, the split is really around the character of Benjamin Netanyahu. How do you see this, Rachel? Um, yeah, I, I agree with Leah that the split was around the character of Netanyahu. 
uh, and not around the real issues. And uh, all parties, or almost all parties, were actually avoiding the real issues. Um, and uh, we have to remember that uh, Netanyahu is uh, a symptom of a failed system that is avoiding <laughs> from tackling the real issues of the Israeli-Palestinian conflicts, of uh, the Nakba that I will be talking about, and of um, um, oppression and injustices inside Israeli society uh, and economic divisions. Uh, so they are not talking about any of these issues and focusing on the charges against uh, Netanyahu. Uh, and that was, this is what the election was about. Uh, and it was um, elections that even more than usual uh, were defined by hatred. Hatred and negation, first of all, of Palestinians and any possibility of cooperation with the uh, Palestinian-led party or with Palestinians in general, uh, and all other kind of uh, groups that were marked as, um, as a target of hate, uh, Haredim, ultra-Orthodox, and uh, Mizrahim, Mizrahi Jews, and even well, the Jews who come from Arab <laughs> and Asian countries and exactly. African countries, um, and and in a way, even Netanyahu himself. Um, so this is what defined these elections. So okay, so that's interesting. I'm, so I, I so let's take two parts of this and see what they might mean. So you have people like Avigdor Lieberman, nine seats, who was out of the Netanyahu government. Uh, said he would not form a coalition with Netanyahu as long as the religious parties were part of it. And they, the religious parties lost a lot of seats, all three of them. Um, so now it seems he's saying he might be willing to form, and it's unclear because he's, he's obviously playing a very, he's playing a game here, a political game. But one of the games he's playing is, well, I'll join a coalition if blue and white and Netanyahu and, and, and his party can come together to form a coalition government. Um, how possible is that? Do you think that's going to happen? Could that happen? What would that mean? Leah, do you care to guess? <laughs> I, I have no idea. Yeah. I, I, that's um, interesting. And you and you were just yeah. and you live there. <laughs> <laughs> I really, it's it's hard to tell what uh, what a Victor Lieberman will do, uh, or what drives him at all. It's certainly not uh, principles. So, um, Avigdor Lieberman's been in Israeli politics for, since 98, and his only political achievement is quitting in protest. So, but, so, but it, so, so you, you, have, you think they, could form, they would form a government together, the three of them, those three groups? Would that, could that happen? Um, I think I'm going to echo Rachel's thoughts. I mean, it, okay. anybody who has ever tried to predict the future when it comes to Israel <laughs> and Palestine has been proven wrong. I think that rather than looking at what could happen, uh, there's a number of very interesting things that did happen okay. in this election that definitely deserve discussion. So talk about what are, what are those? Well, throw throw mean, one out for the Rachel, discussion. Rachel mentioned a, a number of them, but I also think it's interesting that, um, you know, this uh, era of the old right, the explicitly genocidal, explicitly pro-ethnic cleansing, uh, right in Israel that, uh, you know, has been there, you can argue, from the early days of Zionism, but has had a very ugly face in the last, uh, you know, five or so years. Um, I find it interesting that those people didn't get elected um, when it was getting clear that um, they are not as marginal as they used to be. People like uh, Osma Yodit's party, um, um, Itmar Ben Gvir, people like uh, uh, Feiglin from the Hoot, that uh, uh, basically, uh, if you read their book, uh, Moshe Feiglin's book, he's very explicit about supporting ethnic cleansing and genocide. Uh, Ron Kobi's party, who's basically, he's riding on the coattails of the alt-right. It's interesting to me that these parties did not get elected. It's also interesting to me that Gesher uh, did get elected. And Gesher uh, is, part of their, for our viewers? Gesher is a party that formed a coalition with the Labour uh, party because Labour was flailing, while it's historically the party that led the country. Uh, and created the country of Israel and, and was its, uh, its ruling uh, party for decades. Uh, in recent years, it's really, you know, uh, shrunk to almost nothing. Gesher has some very interesting people in it, especially Orly uh, Levi Abakasis and uh, the very renowned and uh, incredible feminist activist, uh, Carmen El-Makias Amos, 
So those people who are real, uh, you know, social justice warriors uh, are are elected. And I think that that could potentially have a very interesting impact on the kind of government that we're going to have. And you, of course, also have your, like, uh, you know, run-of-the-mill liberal, um, like, uh, that got re-elected, um, you know, labor, so, those, those kinds of people. So, but we also have racial, let's talk about this for a minute, joint lists, 113 seats, which could either, it could make them the legal opposition as the third largest group of, a block of votes in the, in the Knesset. Um, and that has come, for me, I keep smiling when I think about it because it means if they were the opposition, they would have to get security uh, briefs from the prime minister. They would have to speak at the prime minister that Ode himself, the head of the coalition, would, would have a security detail <laughs> around him, um, which, you know, they, I don't know if that's safe for him or not, but he would have a security detail. But what does this mean politically? I mean, because this could go either way. Talking, there's talk of creating a left coalition with them, but many people don't want that in the Israeli side. Um, and there's talk of them being the opposition. So what would that mean? Either way. Um, I, um, I don't know which way it will go. It will certainly be very interesting uh, to have a Palestinian uh, head of the, uh, of the opposition for the first time. And, and that might happen. Uh, I think it, it will reveal, in a way, um, Israeli being already a kind of a state uh, based on segregation, mm. which it is. Mm. Um, and uh, it will be very interesting to see how they work around it. Um, but uh, it's also interesting to see that the joint list uh, had a rough patch. It, uh, it fell apart in the last election and uh, um, parties run separately, and then it joined together again, um, and managed to uh, raise the percentage of voting, voting uh, in the uh, Arab-Palestinian public, uh, which wasn't a given at all, and, and is also very interesting uh, to see um, Palestinian citizens of Israel uh, willing to wield the, their powers in the ballot and, um, and more Israelis, still a small number, but uh, more than ever, Israelis willing to vote for the jo joint list. Um, so I think that's interesting and in a way an encouraging sign of uh, some different undercurrents in Israeli society. If I was talking about this election being defined by hatred, before this is an undercurrent that is resisting this hatred. Um, and that will be very it's interesting important. to see how it grows. I mean, you, I, was, I was amazed to see the, the ad advertisement taken out before the election with Jewish Israeli professors at different universities saying, vote for the joint list, which was something that was, I was really shocked to see that as a very public push. Um, so what, what do you all think will be the, so let's very quickly, what do you think the outcome could be? Because this, if it fails, they have to have a third election. <laughs> I mean, what this, this, what, what? What could happen here? Go ahead, Leah. Uh, well, I think that it's important to understand that Netanyahu has many, many enemies inside his own party. Uh, and people like Gidon Stahl in particular have been angling for the leadership of the Likud party for many years um, and has broad support across many sectors uh, of the population that vote for Likud. So uh, I'm a big believer in uh, Marshall McLuhan's uh, idea that the medium is the message. Mm -hmm. And the way that this is being mediated is very uh, telling. So, for example, uh, Bitan is the only member of the Likud that's been really uh, speaking in the media today. Uh, and he's been saying stuff like, you know, Gantz uh, 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 demanding that they would only join a coalition with the Likud if Netanyahu uh, is deposed. That will never be accepted by us. Uh, you know, it's Bibi or nothing. You know, I think that maybe Bitan truly believes that. I don't know. Certainly Netanyahu is the one who got the vote for the Likud. But there's also a very strong uh, force inside the Likud that is uh, waiting for the opportunity to jump on a Netanyahu-free uh, future. So that's definitely a possibility uh, that the two big blocks, the, the blue and white, the Cholavan, and Likud join forces, that's very possible. Mm. Uh, if Likud people manage to get Netanyahu uh, out of the leadership. Uh, other options are, of course, that uh, what the media has been claiming, that uh, 
blue and white will join forces with all of the center parties and also the joint list. The joint list has been doing a nonstop interviews all day today on the media, saying that it's absolutely not a given that they will join uh, blue and white, that this is a party of generals, and that it would be uh, quite questionable for uh, a Palestinian, largely Palestinian party to join forces with generals, especially since we have uh, brutal attacks on the Gaza Strip every couple of years. And it's very possible and realistic to expect that within their tenure mm. in such a coalition, they would be responsible for bombing their, uh, their you know, other Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip. And right. of course, continuing the occupation of the uh, West Bank and, and the uh, uh, two-tiered uh, uh, right system inside of Israel. So that's another option. And of course, the third option is that the whole thing falls apart again. And they go to elections a third time, which is not uh, outside the realm of possibility. So very finally here, I mean, what would it mean, sorry, Rachel, and then before we close, if, if the joint list, which is an amalgam of parties that are Arab parties, the Communist Party, a bunch of and, uh, and other organizations, mostly Palestinian, as Lee was just saying, uh, if they became the opposition, the official opposition in the Knesset, what would that mean? Uh, well, they were opposition before. But I mean, the, uh, just not the be, leaders of, right, right. of, uh, of the, the leaders. That's right. The leaders uh, of the opposition. Just not the leaders of the opposition. Um, I I don't think it will mean that much. It uh, it will definitely create some uh, conflict uh, if there have to be given a security brief as as the law demands and. Uh, We'll have to see what happens there because, uh, well, um, it's very likely that there will be an attempt to prevent this. And That's then we will have a very interesting discussion. Final thought, Leah, before we have to end on that? Um, I think also, like, the, the last thing I wanted to say about the message um, is that uh, unlike in previous uh, elections where Netanyahu has been throwing little tricks right before election day, um, get to garner, you know, uh, vote, mostly by saying really insane, very racist things. This time, what I noticed is that he kept uh, saying in the media that he is the true friend of Trump, Putin, and Saudi Arabia. And that's a very interesting mm. turn because the Israeli press does mm. not really cover foreign affairs. And so being a friend of Putin or being a friend of Saudi Arabia doesn't mean that much the Israeli public that knows very little about the geopolitical uh, context inside of which Israel operates and the hegemony that it claims in the Middle East. Uh, but what they, the Israeli public does hear when he says that is that he is equating himself to basically uh, being a world leader on the class of imperial leadership, such as Russia's, the United States, and Saudi Arabia's. So uh, mm. that, I think, really reaffirms that Netanyahu and what whether he is able to be deposed in the coming days is really going to be the determining factor in what happens with these elections. This has been a fascinating discussion. Um, I think very enlightening as well. Uh, Leah Tavshensky, it's always a pleasure to uh, have to talk with you and hear your thoughts and ideas. And uh, Rachel Patari, it's wonderful to have you in the studio and look for our conversation with her coming up in the next week about her organization and the work they're doing around the Nakba. And we'll continue to cover what's happening uh, in these Israeli elections as they unfold, and of course, what's happening with Israel and Palestinians. Thank you all for joining us. Let us know what you think. I'm Mark Steiner here for The Real News. Take care. Thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, but do us one more solemn favor. Hit the subscribe button below. You know you want to. Stay up on the videos.